Good morning. Welcome everyone to the town council meeting at March 22nd. Uh, happy to have all of you this morning. Um, we have a, a good agenda uh, ready for us. Uh, if you will, we'll first begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, Larry, would you like to do our invocation? Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance mm -hmm. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, yeah. with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Larry? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with us at our meeting today and give us wisdom. We pray that you would bless our community. We give thanks for the blessings you've already given us, the blessings of family, friends, and community. We pray that you would be with us as we go forth and bring us safely back. These things we pray in our holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Larry. Well, there's absolutely zero way we could begin our meeting without once again paying recognition and condolences to the loss of Charlie Powers. Uh, Charlie was instrumental in our community and the history of our town. Um, a great friend to all and uh, one that committed a tremendous amount of his life to true service to the town of Fort Mill. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you and your actions as I feel the town um, all grieved collectively for the passing of Charlie. Thank you staff for all the wonderful things done to recognize uh, that we were indeed in mourning and uh, we will keep Charlie in our hearts forever. So thank you all for uh, participating in uh, every way that we were able to recognize Charlie and his gifts to the town. All right, um, with that, um, council members, you've received the minutes, a very nice job, by the way, Virginia, of the March 8th town council meeting. Uh, do I have any, uh, do I have a motion? Move for approval. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. All right, hearing that motion and the approval, uh, does anyone see a need for any change, deletion, or amendment to those minutes? minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. All right, thank you, Virginia. Uh, public comment, pursuant to section 246 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill, any citizen of the town may appear before council for the purpose of providing public comments on any municipal matter except personnel matters. Those who wish to speak must sign in outside of council chambers prior to the start of the meeting. To maintain social distancing, citizens will only be allowed into council chambers one at a time to give their comments. Davey, do we have anyone present that would like to comment? Your microphone's off. I do that every time. Sorry, Mayor. Okay. I would not have anyone signed up today to speak. All right. Thank you so much. And we will begin our regular meeting. Uh, there are no presentations this morning. Uh, there are no old business items this morning. So we'll start with new business item number one, a resolution authorizing staff to apply for and accept, if, if awarded, a transportation alternative program, grant and or congestion mitigation and air quality improvement grant through the Rock Hill Fort Mill Area Transportation Study, which is affectionately known as RFATS, uh, to commit to funding a local grant match in cooperation with York County. Penelope is our expert on this issue and it is in Ward 4, which is Mr. Moody's ward. Uh, do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept new business item number one. Thank you, Jamie. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Mayor. Thank you, Trudy. Penelope, guide us through. Sure, good morning, Mayor and Council Members. Um, uh, last year, around November, December, we had some residents from uh, Catawba Ridge and, um, excuse me, at Waterside, uh, Waterside and also um, 
Pecan Ridge and also the Dominion Bridge um, residents that knew that a new middle school was coming on White's Road and they wanted to have sidewalks. So staff looked into um, the Transportation Alternative Program grant um, that RFATS provides each year. And we went out to the site a couple weeks ago with um, local officials and also um, the actual people from the SCDOT. And it was determined um, based on the money that's available for the TAP um, grant this year, it's about 112,927. It would be uh, our best interest to apply with uh, for a grant with your county. And the map that you see is basically we would provide sidewalk on the same side of the middle school for, from Pecan Ridge um, going all the way to the middle school. Granted, the school district is providing sidewalks on their property, but this is to get the students to be able to walk to the middle school. Um, the school district did tell us that they will be providing a crosswalk across Forest Creek Middle School to the Cutaba Ridge High School. Um, in this grant, um, we would also have uh, another crosswalk um, for kids since Pecan Ridge is actually split the subdivision so they could be able to cross over. When we got, um, when we got back, SCDOT gave us some estimates and the estimates that we received was a total of $465,000 for this project to um, be completed. And there's been more conversations as late as um, Friday that we possibly um, were still debating if we should apply for the Transportation Alternative Program grant or the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality grant, which is the CMAC. Um, because CMAC, there's more money available. Um, but we do want to let you all know that um, York County has committed $100,000 of C funds. And this resolution is asking um, for a hundred thousand dollars commitment from the town of Fort Mill. Wonderful. Um, I think it's important to note that there have been um, many that have contacted the town and um, expressed concern at the lack of a sidewalk. I think also think it's important to note that you know there is a portion of the sidewalk area that falls within the county. It is not in the town limits. So I, for one, am very grateful for the efforts by the county to participate with us in obtaining um, the funding necessary to add the sidewalk of, along this busy road. So um, council members, do you have questions for Penelope? So for clarity, we will have a crosswalk near the roundabout at the subdivisions as well as a crosswalk between the two schools, correct? Yes, so in between, actually from Pecan Ridge, where the Pe Pecan Ridge two entrances, we are in the estimate with this grant, um, it's proposing a crosswalk. The school district informed the town that with their completion of the Forest Creek Middle School, they will put a crosswalk across to the back entrance of the parking lot to the high school. So yes, but, um, but the school district would be responsible for that crosswalk. The grant okay. is the sidewalks uh, and then the crosswalk across from Pecan Ridge um, entrances. And do you feel the one, the crosswalk between the high school and middle school would be um, easily accessible for the Dominion Bridge children? Th that is when we um, talked about the Dominion Bridge um, at this time, it's, it's not feasible to be able to extend it. Um, there's a lot of topo and there's um, right away that we need, but from the town's perspective, we know the commercial development will occur on the opposite side where the hair cedar site, and they will have to do improvements at that um, traffic intersection. And at that time, we believe that the sidewalks would be a safer route for the Dominion Ridge residents to walk up to the traffic light, use the crosswalk with the traffic, the, the PEDS 
um, signals there to go to the high school. Okay. And that, and Ms. Cook, and I did inform the representative from Dominion Bridge. I've been very transparent because like the mayor stated, we've received many calls and letters and support letters. Um, so they are aware from the Dominion Ridge side at this time, um, they will not be able with this grant to, to build a sidewalk to Dominion Bridge. Yeah, and I'm probably gonna voice an unpopular opinion here, but um, I have never supported crosswalks across a bypass. Um, the bypass is intended for higher speed traffic. Um, I, for one, would never send my child uh, to school to walk across a bypass regardless of that. Uh, some of the crosswalks that we are planning, I understand the need for them, but I do think there's an extreme need for caution uh, because these are highly traveled roads. And I, I for one, am not, uh, I'm not totally supportive of, uh, of anything crossing the bypass itself. I do recognize Dominion Bridge is on the side of the middle school and the high school is across the road. So at least you have older pedestrians uh, that would be crossing. Yeah, and that cross would actually be at White's Road, wouldn't it? And so the bypass. Yes, but there's no sidewalk on that side of Catawba Ridge. The juncture is quite a distance and to Penelope's point, the topo there is, is extremely varied. <laughs> So I think that would be, when we first looked at Catawba Ridge's plans, there were areas uh, that you would have had to cantilever a sidewalk to get it uh, in a position to be used. So I do think, you know, topo and sidewalk need uh, oftentimes run head to head. Penelope, did I state that correctly? That is correct, Mayor. And while it's not the sidewalk, there is concern about the road itself there and how abused it has been and how rough it is. When will that um, additional resurfacing and so forth be taken care of? Because again, I'm scared of people walking along the side here with some of the potholes they have. At this time, uh, Ms. Cook, I, I do not know um, the timetable for the resurfacing of, of White's Road. Okay. And neither do I. Penelope sits on the technical um, board for the RFATS group and I sit on the committee. Um, it is, the committee is aware of the condition. It has not rolled up. I do believe that it's just like any subdivision. No one wants to do the final paving until the heavy traffic is finished and Pecan Ridge is still under construction. You're right about the potholes, but quite frankly, this Friday, I intend to mention those on Spratt Street, right in the center of town, where there is no construction. So, um, you know, the group has to address all the road conditions in a very large area. So we will uh, definitely continue to put the request out front uh, for that. And you're right, Lisa, it's in bad shape, um, but it just has to roll into the window where it is approved to be um, re refurbished. <clears throat> Penelope, can you tell, tell me the numbers again? 400K to build the sidewalk from, I guess, where it's indicated in this line you have drawn here? Yes. So the total estimate that we received from Columbia was $465,000 and, um, excuse me, $465, $4.90. And then we're getting a hundred thousand from the county. Yes. And then we're on the hook for a hundred thousand. If if you so we're looking at this it. we're looking at this grant to make up the difference of that two hundred and sixty five k. Well, exactly. Well, that's where um, you know it comes to the discussions. Are we going to do a tap grant or a CMAC? Um, you know, so for a local match, we are good for both. From the town's perspective, um, if we do the CMAC, if we apply for that, um, because the grant, the TAP grant, there, the, we would receive if we are awarded $112,000. Um, and so then we would have to look into either guide share from RFAT, um, but we're, we're looking for the difference 
um, to be able to complete this project, um, you know, in a year <coughs> or two. So Jamie, we have alternate uh, sources to apply for funds. CMAC has a, a larger uh, amount to tap into. Uh, the TAP funds are a little more limited. And then GuideShare funds, which I believe were used to help with the stretch of sidewalk at NAFO. Um, we just have to look at all avenues to find the money to complete the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah because by my math, we're still short 100K. So we can't, so can we apply if we apply to the TAF one, then we can do the guide share on top of that to bridge that difference, or uh, I'm not, a, okay. We can't, yeah. Right. yeah, if it's committed, yes. Okay. And again, this goes before the full RFATS council. There's an RFATS meeting this Friday. Um, you know, you can look up our fats and tap into virtual uh, those meetings. I will tell you that I do not believe this is on our agenda for Friday. Um, it has been previous. Um, you know, there's a tremendous amount of information that co gets covered in those meetings. They, they run well over an hour and it's nonstop. Mm -hmm. Um, but this particular one, we're in the phase and very fortunate to have the agreement by Christy Cox with the county council uh, to support that we collectively obtain the funds to do this. And, and just for you all to know, the grants, both grants are due um, April 9th. So what will happen is in May, before the RFATS um, policy committee, there's a subcommittee for these grants. And we would review, you know, um, staff would present their case in front of this committee. And then um, the RFATS policy decision, um, elected officials would vote on it in June at their policy meeting. So there is a process um, if we are awarded either the TAP grant or the CMAC. Um, I'm meeting this afternoon for further discussion since we are jointly writing the grant to fully decide are we going to with the TAP or the CMAC grant. So I'm sorry I don't have more information, Mr. Shari, um, but it's, it's still very ongoing so we can get ready to see what we will submit um, before the 9th of April. And Penelope, I don't remember in my service on the the policy committee of anyone receiving both a TAP and a CMAC at the same time. I think you have to apply for one or the other. That is correct. Um, that is correct. The, um, the 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 TAP grants. I know in India Land, when I worked in Lancaster County, we were awarded for the sidewalk grant there. Um, Dam Road was another one, um, you know, I, that the, the tap and they used guide share, um, I remember from Tika K. And then the one at the high school, um, it was CMAC actually here in Fort Mill. So, okay. and Nations Board. So, and there's the different policy, options. Yeah, and the policy committee for RFATS looks to find the, the best path to fund as many projects as they can. They look at the criticality. I think we've gone out and asked uh, these developments to write letters of support uh, that can be used, um, not a petition. I, I did get a contact from someone that asked if the town had requested that all residents sign a petition. Uh, we have simply asked for what is needed um, for the the support documents that would help us make our case for the funding from these entities uh, or these programs rather and um, you know that the, these are just the the programmatic approach applies to everyone so we will be in competition uh, with others for the funding out of each of these funds and the guide share funds as well so the, the better we put ours together and the more partnership opportunity we have with the county, the more likely that we could get the, the funding needed. Yeah, and our goal, and we've told our residents that have sent us the letter, the support letters, and we do appreciate, the town does appreciate those letters because it does help our case with the grant application. 
But um, our goal is to get this sidewalk um, hopefully functioning um, fall of 2022. So that's going to make a difference of which grant. You know, we don't want to delay because we know the school will open this fall of 2021. We want to do the best that we can to provide a safe alternative um, pedestrian connection for those residents to go to school. And I think Jamie's simple point of where the fourth 100 is coming from is the hope that we'll get more than 100 from one of those funds, and then hopefully we can shore it up with CMAC funds. I mean, uh, guide share funds. Sorry, there's too many acronyms and roads, I just got to tell you. Oh, I know. I trust me, I know. I think this points out a, a spot in our town where we've failed a couple of our different communities. This is the newest set of neighborhoods with the newest set of schools, and they're getting a brand new sidewalk connecting all of their uh, little areas and there's other sections of town who have not had sidewalks for at least a decade so maybe we need to go around and start looking at these other areas also and seeing where we can apply another grant or whatever areas that we can also en encourage walking and safety for these children as they're moving around I agree with you, Jamie. There are many areas in town that remain without sidewalks, and we we do um, we do have situations where I see people walking on grassy areas, and I I worry about them, you know, stumbling on something and falling into oncoming traffic. I get it. So uh, that's something we probably should plow into our long range planning. Mm -hmm. I agree. Anybody have any further questions for Penelope on this particular item where she is working on our um, working in collaboration with the county on submitting for these grants to find the one that will provide the most funding to move forward on this project for a sidewalk along uh, White's Road that would serve the Forest Creek Middle School? Hearing none, the motion on the floor is to approve this, and there is a second. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those against, please say nay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We will move to new business item number two, an ordinance raising the maximum charge for the town requested record services in according with section 896 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill. Davey is our subject matter expert. This is a topic that was covered two weeks ago in our uh, council meeting, and um, hopefully we will uh, be able to resolve this with our second vote today. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept new business item number two. Thank you, Jamie. Do I have a second? <clears throat> second. Thank you, Larry. All right, Davey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, a few moments ago, uh, staff did bring this to council at our last meeting. Um, we did not bring it to you in the form of an ordinance. Um, we we discussed our where we stood as a town with our record service charges or the the maximum allowed amounts uh, and where how they related in comparison to. Um, our, our municipal neighbors around us. Um, we were um, we were the lowest of the ones that we uh, provided you. Uh, the recommendation from uh, town council was that staff go back and um, write an ordinance um, and include the amount, a maximum up to $200. Uh, that is what we're presenting to you today. And Mayor, this would be the, actually be the first reading of this ordinance. I realized that after I said this would be second, it's our second hearing of it, but we haven't voted on the ordinance itself. Thank you. Any questions for Davey on this particular item? Just on the process, Davey, um, what have we got in place to ensure that we'll be reviewing this on a more regular basis? We will uh, add this to our annual budget um, timeline, and as we go through the budget, we'll uh, 
make sure we are reviewing with the other municipalities, find out where they stand. And uh, if it is, if we've noticed a, a change, then uh, we will bring that to your attention um, in case uh, there could be some discussion about altering this, uh, this amount, but we will check it on an annual basis at our, uh, during our budget process. Okay, thank you. And of the people that spoke at the last meeting, have we heard anything, any feedback after our last meeting? Um, uh, pros, cons to the direction we were going? We have not. Um, okay. we, they haven't reached out to us on that. Any further questions? Hearing none, the motion on the table is to approve and we have a second to do the same. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Aye. Did I hear a nay? No nays? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll move to our next item. Um, is new business item number three, consideration to award contract for Banks Athletic Park project. Davey is once again our expert. This is in ward four under Mr. Moody. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to accept new business item number three. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second it. I, I got it, I'll second it. Okay, um, Davey? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is an exciting time. We have uh, staff and town council has been looking at the Banks Athletic Park and uh, planning for this for quite some time. Um, I will say that uh, the plans have been um, uh, submitted and reviewed and it was ready for uh, advertisement for construction bids back on January the 18th. That is when we actually uh, advertised for this particular project. Uh, the public bid opening took place on February the 25th in, in which we received six construction bids for this uh, Banks Athletic Park uh, construction. Uh, that was very, uh, that was a, it was very positive to receive that many bids on a uh, construction project of this size. Um, our um, engineering firm um, over this project, ESP Associates and the architecture firm, LS3P, put those bids and vetted them uh, to make sure they met uh, all of the requirements. And uh, I'm happy to say that we have a letter of recommendation from ESP Associates uh, to award the bid. I will read it quickly. Um, based on the information provided, Beam Construction Company Incorporated appears to be the lowest responsible and responsive bidder whose bid has met the requirements and criteria set forth in the contract documents for Banks Athletic Park. It is our recommendation that the construction contract, including alternates one and five for the new Banks Athletic Park be awarded to Beam Construction Company um, incorporated for the total amount of $8,123,800. And so that also included uh, alternates one and five. Uh, Mayor, that was, uh, it came in below our um, budget for this project. So that was uh, good news for that. Um, and uh, based on their recommendation, uh, we are bringing this to your to you in to, uh, for your approval, if you would so wish. You know, we've been through enough projects to know that uh, fortunately, if it starts out below, that gives us a little room uh, for things we might run into. I do have a question on the graphic representation. Um, it shows between the two ball fields, that there's a buffer of trees that um, are there. Is that just graphic interest or will we be able to grade and leave that buffer between the, the four fields? Mayor, I, I do believe there will be some, um, some buffer there, but this may be a, it representing a little more than actual, um, that will actually be there. Uh, right. 
they'll have to grade that. And it's a the topography of this uh, of this site um, has its challenges. So uh, a lot of that area is showing as a buffering now is going to be um, an area that will um, not be very usable for anyone. Um, so in the long run, you will have a buffer grow up in that area. But for I would imagine for construction purposes, it it will start off being cleared and then we'll add back some vegetation uh, at the end of the project. And one of the things I would like to point out to everyone that might be listening in or covering this meeting, uh, this field has been planned for many years. Uh, it is a, not a new choice of location. Uh, that is a heavily wooded area right now and you will see clearing for the project. Um, but I know that I have run into people that have bought homes um, adjacent to the area that were unaware of this park. However, um, this has been made public and shared uh, for years, uh, the intent to move forward with these ball fields that will replace the fields at the current complex on Tom Hall Street. Um, the location was chosen uh, quite some time ago. So this is not a new location, but rather new construction on this particular piece of property that was donated to us by the developer of Waterside. So I, I think that's an important aspect to uh, remain throughout the construction. Uh, this was part of a, a good negotiation uh, to get this as a concession. Um, as the waterside development was built, uh, this land was donated to us. It does have its challenges in grading, so I would imagine that process will take a little bit of time. Davey, I do have a question. I did not see in the information provided um, the timeline for this. Um, how does this award go? I know you said dollar-wise we should be under budget, but what about the timeline? Yes, that's a good question, Ms. Cook. Um, the the original timeline, um, I think I had mentioned in the previous meeting, was 11 months. That was from the engineering and architect firm. Uh, after having pre-bid um, construction um, discussions with um, contractors, uh, it was determined that it would actually be more of a uh, closer to a 14-month turnaround time. So that's the that's the timeline we would be working on is a 14 month timeline. And Davey, I think she's asking, when will it start? They are ready to start um, very soon. Um, they they were eager for us to bring this to, to you for your approval. I would imagine they would, um, upon today's news, if it is awarded to them, the Beam Construction Company, they will begin their paperwork immediately and break ground in the next couple weeks. So the follow-up um, season for recreational sports, we would be looking at um, fall next year or spring the following, so spring 2023? I think the spring 2023 would be the, the long range or, or um, the worst case scenario, we would, if with good weather, we could anticipate having this open for the fall season next year. And the process, do we know, will they start on the fields first so that they could start growing on that prior to doing the other aspects of it? I think what you'll see is they'll, they will clear the entire site um, and they, they will begin on the ball fields, but uh, you're, there's going to be retaining walls um, and um, retention ponds. That'll be the first thing you'll see. But uh, they are the 14 months includes the growing season for the grass. So they will have that well in hand to uh, to have it ready to go in 14 months with good weather. Well, I certainly would like to see it uh, done properly, which I feel certain we wouldn't be awarding the contract to someone that couldn't. Um, but I do know we're on borrowed time um, with the ball fields at the complex. So the sooner we get started, the happier I'll be. Any other questions? Hearing none, the motion on the table is to approve and we do have a second to that. 
Uh, all council members uh, that approve this motion, please say aye. 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 All those that oppose nay. All right, thanks so much. Um, that is the last of our business items uh, for this morning's meeting. We will now move into the information discussion portion. Uh, the first item for discussion is a mid-year budget review. Uh, Davy Broom will present to us and to all those that are listening and are unaware. When we went into the pandemic, we made a, a very aggressive decision to freeze uh, what we could in our budget until we determined the outcome of economic shifts as a result of the pandemic. And uh, this is the point in time that we chose to take a hard look at uh, where do we go from here. So Davey, you've got the show. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for setting that up nicely. Um, yes, so counts, uh, so staff has gone back and done a review through the month of February, from October 1 through February the 28th. Um, our approach was we took and uh, each revenue line item was examined on its own merit. Uh, we took comparisons um, from year over year from February 20th, 20, uh, 2021 to determine uh, where were uh, revenues in 2020 compared to 2021. Uh, then we took that, took that information and forecasted our revenues all the way through our, our current fiscal budget year of September 30th of 2021. Um, next slide, please. So for our year over year February comparisons, um, you can see in 2020, we, um, the collections at that time um, through the end of February was uh, a little over $13.5 million. Uh, for 2021, uh, that amount had increased to uh, 14.9 million. Um, that was a 1.3 million favorable result, uh, which um, which showed us that uh, our our projections for this year we were very conservative in our projections. We did not know how COVID was going to impact our community uh, and the overall economy, um, and uh, it has been a a favorable. Um, we're in a favorable favorable point at this time compared to last year. Um, we took the amounts um, that we currently have uh, and forecasted what remaining uh, revenues we're expecting to receive. So the overall amount would um, would include up to $1.8 million for this year, more than what we had budgeted. So if you look at our budgeted amount uh, in the column to the right, uh, we um, our budget was 21. Uh, million nine hundred forty three thousand three hundred seventy seven dollars um, our projections are that we would receive uh, twenty three million seven hundred eighty five thousand and fifty five dollars um, making up that difference so at this that's very good news um, for the uh, status of our community and and our budget and as the mayor said we froze a lot of our uh, budgeted items that were uh, prior to adopting the current 2020 2021 fiscal budget so based on that and revenues being higher than we projected uh, staff is currently uh, reviewing all of the items um, that were um, held out of the budget to determine which ones need to be placed back in the budget which we would bring back to council at our march 12th meeting for your approval Questions for Davey at this point? April 12th meeting, not March 12th, correct? I'm sorry, April 12th meeting. I misspoke. Thank you. Just making sure. Um, question, Davey, with the increase that we're seeing in costs for about everything right now, particularly building materials, um, is staff seeing any significant changes in budgeted line items from what we had previously um, to now? Uh, we have we're not experiencing um, we're not seeing a lot of changes in those line items. We are under budget on most every line item, um, and but we we have no construction, very little to no construction was in the current budget. So we're not really um, 
working with any pricing changes when it comes to construction material. But uh, after reviewing all of the, um, the line items in the budgets, um, you know, you, you base it on where we, where we are into the um, timeline of our budget year and um, based on the percentage of the amount spent in each line item, um, we were right on target with most every one. Uh, you'll have some that may show a little over, but those may those could be um, physical items that were in the budget that we purchased um, that was purchased all at one time, showing it to be um, we've that we spent over the but over the budget through five months, but we are still under the total budget of the twelve months. So um, our staff has done a terrific job in monitoring their budget, spending only what is needed. Um, during this time time frame, and uh, they they do that well on an annual basis. But uh, it was even it was even more important this year, based on our um, projections and the unknown of where we would be at this time just five months ago. I would like to point out, Davey, that with the rise in gas prices, you know, to Lisa's point, it's you know not just the hardware and the food that that continues to go up, but uh, gas prices certainly have a mind of their own these days, don't they? They do, Mayor, and we'll take that in consideration as we go through each budget. Okay. I think watching what our neighbor to the north is doing on their reopening of the state also, we've we've actually benefited from that where we guided our restaurants and gyms to open under restriction where they had closed everything down. That's where a lot of this windfall came from, a lot of our northern neighbors have been coming down and using our facilities because they can't have theirs. So there's going to be a time where this curve is going to start coming down. Also, we will probably get back more in line with our projected budget than we are with this windfall of money. Agreed, Jamie. I do think the difference, too, is that, you know, there's certain things we didn't spend money on. So it's not totally an increase based on uh it, it, what you've very factually stated that we are seeing people cross over the line uh to come to areas that are open uh, where theirs aren't so um I, I applaud the staff for the work that they've done to manage their costs and continue their service throughout the pandemic um, i think this budget review is a very positive step and it's only a couple of months to we'll start the budget uh, for the next year Any further questions? Okay, we don't vote on this because it's just an information discussion. Uh, Davey, would you like to move to information discussion item two, which is an yes, update on Walter Y. Elijah? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to give a brief update. I gave an, uh, a lengthy or a lengthier um, presentation uh, at our a meeting earlier this month. Um, but there were some um, some things that have taken place uh, in just the last couple of days that I could not um, get into. Uh, what, what didn't find out the information till after I'd put out the uh, the agenda. But uh, the restrooms you see pictured here, the one on the left is the restroom site for the Walter Wild Elisha Park. The one on the right is the restroom for the Calhoun Street Soccer Field Park. Um, these photos were taken, these were what I presented uh, earlier this month before the landscaping was completed. Uh, I am happy to say we, staff has done a final walkthrough with the, our engineering firm over the uh, project as well as the contractor. Both restrooms are very near completion. Uh, we anticipate having, being able to open them to the public as early as Wednesday of this week. Uh, there were just some very minor uh, punch items that they needed to complete, um, but it is they they're both I, I viewed them both and they are they're beautiful inside and out. Uh, the architecture is uh, it really stands out, and we received um, a, a lot of positive feedback on how they look in our park. So, um, council members, you should be very proud of um, of these restrooms and the amphitheater and the Walter Wildlife Park project overall. But uh, we're very excited about opening these to the public. I know everyone else will enjoy them. So 
we do anticipate having them open as early as Wednesday of this week. I love them. I think they're absolutely, uh, they make my heart smile because they remind me of uh, the years that my grandparents and family members worked at the mills there on that location for a living. Um, I'm going to be the first uh, to caution that um, the generosity of the close family and the Springs folks to provide that park after the mill burned, uh, they had many workout stations along the, the walking trail. And those workout stations were great for the, those of us that wanted to use them for their purpose, um, not so much for vandals. Guys, we're going to do surveillance. I want the public to understand we will be paying close attention in every way possible uh, to these restroom facilities. And I would like for everyone to have the pride in their community to ensure that if you see someone, uh, you report someone if they're doing any uh, activity or any vandalism at all. Uh, I want you to report that because our tax money paid for these upgrades to that and hopefully we will all enjoy the use of them. So be sure, um, take care of them and report any um, inappropriate actions uh, towards those facilities, please. <clears throat> and Mayor, to your point, we will, uh, we will post some signage at both restroom sites uh, providing those phone numbers in case they if they want to report any any uh, information thank you thank you all right um wonderful updates any questions for davy on either one uh the mid-year budget review or the walter elijah park update all right um we're moving rapidly in this year i don't know about you but the time seems to be passing very quickly for me we do not have an executive session item for this morning um what jamie would you like to provide for the good of the whole i'm good thank you all right lisa i'm good as well looking forward to the spring weather and seeing um walter elijah come into bloom really helps it does. Larry? Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my thanks to the police uh, fire department for the way they performed during Charlie Power's funeral. Uh, they stood at attention and they had the ladder truck with the big American flag off, off of it. And I've expressed that to the fire chief and assistant fire chief, but I just want to make that public. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Ronnie? I'm good. Thank you. Trudy? I'm good too, thank you very much. You're welcome. Chris Moody? I'm good too, I hope everybody has a, a great week. Great, I'd like to add a couple of things. Um, this is spring officially, and uh, as we all know here in the South, our weather will give you whiplash if you just think about it. Um, we are bound to have storms pass through during the spring months. Uh, the debris that's left on the side of the roads, the town will pick up as quickly as possible. Please be aware to keep that debris in the manageable lengths. Can't put a whole tree out by the road. You have to keep it in lengths that our equipment can uh, be used to collect it. Uh, please keep the storm drains free of debris and litter. They are not trash cans. Please do not uh, leave litter and things that can stop up the storm drains because then we experience the large pooling of water, which can be a hazard to drivers. Um, thanks to our public works folks, uh, there's a lot of debris out there. Uh, even as we speak and a, a lot that they do daily to keep our town looking good. And uh, as a cautionary, uh, now that it is spring, everyone's beginning to get shots and I think we're all in a place of hope right now. Um, just be aware of pedestrians. Please don't drive so fast on Main Street. I am in hopes that as we see new businesses opening and old businesses returning to, um, you know, the, the, the open and free access that we had prior to the pandemic, uh, that you will still take all the precautions necessary so that we can continue our path towards a return to some type of normalcy. 
but uh, please drive more slowly on Main Street. And uh, Council, I would like for us this year to take on uh, continued discussions about what to do about the congestion on Main Street. So thank you all. Uh, your hard work does pay off. Um, very fortunate to serve with each and every one of you. And with that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So, so moved. Thank you, Larry. A second? Second. All right. All those in favor for adjournment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. nay. Thank you all. I hope you have a wonderful week.